Seth African, um, uh, international, who plays for Charlton and he's uh, big uh, mates with Nelson Mandela, yeah. do you know? No Ladies way. and gentlemen, please welcome Sean Bartlett. <laughs> Ladies first, ladies first, ladies first, ladies first. Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Right, Sean, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> let's have a look at you in action. Quinton Fortune, Manchester United. Watch out for McCarthy, who's very lively up front. And Bartlett, two! And it's a goal for South Africa! And it's Sean Bartlett, their captain who has got the Irish rocking early on. Um, that's, that's you played for South Africa. We're going to talk about the uh, African Nations Cup a little bit later, but you're not, you're not going out, are you? You're not playing in no, South no. Africa? No, no. I sort of retired last November. Why? Uh, I didn't want to go to the Nations Cup, firstly. So why? Missing too many games for Charlton. Right. Fun. I'd say the main reason. That's why I retired. The only way to get out of the squad. Right, OK. We will talk about bit more of that later. Yeah, but first of all, uh, you and Nelson Mandela are friends, is this true? Uh, you could say that, yeah. <laughs> now, as I understand it, most people, uh, you know, the England squad and everybody yeah. goes to see Nelson Mandela. Everyone wants to meet him. Nelson Mandela wanted to meet you. Um, you could say that in a way. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking what I was happened? a bit more famous than him, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, when I played in the States, I was very... Uh, friends with his granddaughter and uh, she called the day before the wedding ask if he can come and uh, your wedding my wedding yeah <laughs> and I, at first I thought it was a joke because I was gonna invite the president to his wedding you know so uh, <laughs> funny enough he showed up on time <laughs> yeah. as well he was there before my wife which was quite good and <laughs> I think it's the first time in history a woman's ever been on time my wife was there bang on three <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Nelson Mandela gate crashed that, your wedding? Uh, that's not ideal being upstage at your own wedding, though. Well, what can you Nelson do, eh? Mandela. You met, the man has been in prison for 27 years. Obviously, you want to have a party, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every, Turns every, off everybody's wedding. Everyone's going, nice wedding, Sean. Where's Nelson? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah congratulations, mate. Yeah. Where is yeah. it? <laughs> so, look, we've been trying to book him for the show for years. You, yeah. Well, it's going to be difficult getting him out here, you know. He's getting old. Can't walk that much anymore, so... Um, I'll, I'll probably try my best, maybe. <laughs> does, does he like his football? Oh, he loves it. Every time the national team plays, he comes to the hotel and beat the boys. The only unfortunate part is we have to wake up at five in the morning because he's still in the routine where he was in prison. Oh, right. Wakes up at four, goes for a walk, and uh, yeah. so we have to wake up at five and see him at six. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know whether he watches the, 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 the premiership at all or, you know, club football? I think he does. He's, he's quite interested in sport. And obviously, being South Africans playing in England, yes. he, he likes to follow them got, as well. So. Got to be a Charlton fan. You never know. Soccer AM might yeah. be in South Africa. He might be watching now. Morning, yeah. Nelson. Morning, Nelson. Yeah. Hi. How are yeah, you? With, with you and Mark Fish there. Yeah. 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 Two, two South Africans, probably Charlton. Anyway. Why aren't you playing today, by the way? Uh, fortunately, I've been injured for about three months. I had a freak injury in training where I went off for a ball, come down and sort of landed wrongly on my ankle and had a piece of cartilage removed. Uh, but I'm back now, I'm starting training on Monday. When do you think you'll be back playing? Hopefully in two weeks. Um, if Curbs is watching. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, hopefully in two weeks. Obviously, I have to get match fit first. Yeah. Talking about uh, Alan Curbs, did you get sick of every single uh, job that comes up? Um, media speculation always puts Alan Curbs there. Whatever it is, is that, I mean, is that annoying? Well, I don't get sick of it. No. Maybe he does, but I don't. <laughs> um, I think it's bound to happen, you know. He's, he's been doing pretty well with uh, Charlton, and every year he gets great, great results. So uh, I think it's going to happen every time he's had a good season. Yeah, I think it's good for him as well, you know. So hopefully, if he does decide one day to go, and hopefully it's to a big club, not to a club. And you've played international football as well as club football. Do you think, because also people say that Alan Kirbishley maybe should be the England manager in future years. Seeing as you've played international football, mm -hmm. do you think he's got what it takes to, to be an international manager? I think he does. Obviously, only time will tell. And uh, I personally think he's, he's, he's ready for the job. 
Um, Couldn't really say no though, could you? Though? No, I'm not really. <laughs> but, you know, I'll just jeopardise. Jeopardise my position. Ten years time, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So you think he's he could? No, walk, I don't. Know. Step on the <laughs> shoes now. It's not going to be easy. It's a different level though. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I think. Um, he could be one of the guys that can step up to that level. Mm. Well, he's obviously, doing, he's, so. he's obviously a brilliant yes. club manager. Yeah. You're sitting in a Champions League position. Do you feel you can maintain that? I mean, everyone talks about Newcastle and Liverpool, Liverpool isn't it? Really? Place, I mean, Charlton are sitting there in fourth. You, yeah. you, you, you know, you're beating great teams, legendary teams like Chelsea. <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah. do you think you can maintain it? Well, I hope so. I hope so. Um, I hope to be part of that as well. So, um, I think every year people talk about us as fading away. Uh, I, it's going to be different this season because guys want to learn from their mistakes. And the uh, last three seasons, we've always done that. We just fade away. But uh, we definitely want to be in Europe next season, so we're going to try our best. Brilliant. Mm. OK, for the time being, everyone, Sean Barlow. <laughs> right, uh, coming up next, more bad language. Mickey knowledge to wow your mates with down the pub seen as sean's with us we thought this week we would teach you all you need to know about the african nations cup the 24th african nations cup begins next saturday holders cameroon plus 14 qualified nations will travel to host country tunisia to play 31 matches in six different venues over a three-week period with the final being held in rades on the 14th of february Egypt won the first competition back in 1957 when only three teams took part. Since then the tournament has expanded and when Cameroon won in 1988 a record 16 teams took part. The format has remained the same since. The 16 teams are split into four groups of four with the top two in each progressing to the knockout stages. The 22-man squads were finalised on Wednesday and a record 22 English-based players will be in Tunisia with many more coming from teams around Europe. These players are key to their nation's success for example, newcomers Zimbabwe will rely heavily on their captain, the Blades Peter Undlove, and the Democratic Republic of Congo will be hoping that Newcastle's Lamana Lualoa can lead them to glory. Because European-based players are in mid-season, many countries' preparations have been affected by club managers trying to hold on to them till the very last minute. Arsenal's Kanu won't join his Nigeria teammates until after Arsenal's Carlin Cup semi-final next Tuesday, only four days before the tournament starts. And JJ Koch's arrival has also been delayed by club commitments and by reported financial problems in Nigeria. The club versus country row sensationally led to the sacking of South Africa coach Efrain Mashaba this week after he dropped star players like Man United's Quintin Fortune and Porto's Benny McCarthy because of a dispute over which games they played in. Several teams in the tournament have taken advantage of a two-week-old FIFA rule stating that players with dual nationality who have not been capped at full international level can apply to FIFA to change the country they represent. Marley angered Spurs when they'd persuaded in-form Freddy Canute to commit his future to them, despite having played for the French under-21 side earlier in his career. Marley have already reaped the benefit, Freddy scored in his debut against Algeria on Thursday. African nations will be hoping that more players follow suit so that they are in a stronger position to challenge for future honours. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all you need to know about the African Nations Cup. That is... That is, um, unless we, we've got a complete list of all the players uh, leaving England to go and play in the African Nations Cup. Um, so you can look down that list there. Uh, obviously, Carnu for us at the bottom. A lot of players. There's, there's two pages of it. Let's go on to the next page. Okay, Liverpool on. losing to Diaw and Juve. Uh, and JJ Okocha, as you saw in that film. So um, I don't know. You're, you're not going, as you said, Sean, but uh, why I can't understand, and there's probably a really obvious reason that I, don't, I haven't thought of, but why can't the African Nations Cup, as so many of the great, mm. the good players play in Europe, why can't they move it to the summer to go in line with all the other European countries? I think there's been an argument from the player side for the last few years, you know. Um, clubs don't want to lose their players, and I think most of the players don't want to go. It's too soon as well, it's every two years, whereas the European Championship and the World Cup's every four years. I think every four years in the summer, players will go here. Gladly, you know, but uh, I think it's bad for African players because in the future, European clubs are going to say they don't want to sign African players. Hopefully, mm. they'll sort it out sooner than later. Or do you think they'll sign them and say, but you can't play for your country? And sort of put pressure on them or to retire as well. Right. Fortunately, that wasn't put on me. That was purely my decision to do it. So, you, obviously, people like you are put in a horrible position as well yeah. because you've got to decide what to do, club or country. Uh, and most players want to play for the country until yeah. they can't play anymore. But yeah. uh, I think, end of the day, you've got to think about your club career as well. Yeah, okay. and you, come on, you know Nelson Mandela. You could, I'm sure, you could implement this. Take it. Say, Soccer AM says, shift it to the summer. 
all done and dusted. <laughs> Who's going to win it? I think Cameroon. Got to be the favourites. Right. Okay. Thanks, Sean. All right now.